Wiggle is often that first expression you discover in your introduction to After Effects. You throw in a couple numbers and suddenly you've got a cool moving background as you gaze through a hut of oscillating elements as some glitchy text animations appear overhead. But stop for a moment and try to explain what this cute expression is doing and your brain will probably have a system crash. So let's reboot your knowledge by delving into what's at the heart of the wiggle expression. So, the wiggle expression. You apply it as an expression to properties and it causes this random wobbling effect. It can be used with two to five arguments, though more often than not it's just used with the first two, so we will start with that. Frequency is the number of wiggles per second, though for this video we'll refer to them as beats. Amplitude is the max amount of variance the wiggled value will go to, centered around that current value for the property. If at this stage you're thinking these are all very musical terms, that's because rather than thinking of wiggle like a random number generator for your property, it's a lot easier to think of it like a sound wave. A sound wave goes up and down at a certain rhythm as time progresses, hitting high and low values at equally spaced intervals. The distance between these high points is called the frequency. Let's call both the high and low points where our value seems to stop and then go the other way as the beats of our wave. They also go up and down a set amount from that central value. The difference between the highest and lowest points is what we call the amplitude and is in part what influences the loudness of a sound wave. If we were to apply this same alternating wave pattern to a property, we would see our value move up and down over time, according to the frequency. The result is the same as if we were to put a keyframe at every beat and then ease in and out of each one. Now let's visualize our wiggle expression the same way. By setting the frequency and amplitude values, our wiggle expression has now created its own kind of wave. You can see here are some of those beats that we spoke of. But if we try to visualize the frequency from those beats, you'll see it's not perfectly spaced like our sound wave. That's because when we set the frequency of our wiggle expression, we're actually saying how many wiggles we want to have within one second. We will always have the same number of wiggles within each second, and therefore the same number of beats each second, but the spacing of those beats isn't always exactly the same. Also, notice how rather than hitting our maximum value on every beat, like our sound wave did, our beats fall on a random value somewhere in between. See, some beats have very little change between each other, while others have quite a degree of variance. But big or small change, our wiggle expression eases in and out of each beat. This is what our wiggle expression does over time, and this is how it creates that random wobbling effect. Remember though that at the beginning we said that the wiggle expression can go up to five arguments? So what about these other three? Well, for starters, the last one is time. This value sets where along this wave our wiggle expression is picking the value from. When it's not defined like our example here, it defaults to the current time as a value. So as we progress in our timeline, so too are we along this wave. But if you wanted to offset your value or only pull a value from one point in time, you could do that by setting this time offset value. For example, Dan Herbert's motion script site has a mini tutorial on using the time argument to seamlessly loop your wiggle expression every few seconds. So if that's something that interests you, I definitely recommend checking that out after this video. That now only leaves our final two arguments, octave and amp multi. Thus far, we have spoken about our wiggle expression being like a single wave with random high and low points. It smoothly shifts from one beat to the next. Another way to picture it is like this fractal noise. It sort of looks like clouds, where dark spots are low points and light spots are high points. Let's now consider these last two arguments in this context. Octave starts at a value of one, and as we increase it, it's like introducing noise and complexity to our wiggle expression. Suddenly, rather than smoothly transitioning from those high and low points, there's a lot more noise in between. Looking at our other argument now, we come to amp multi. As you change this value higher or lower from its default value of 0.5, you can make the noise more extreme or more subtle. 
Going back to show this on our wiggle wave, we can change our octave to 2 and start bringing up the amp multi value. Since the wiggle expression acts like a wave, it means that the noise from our octave value can add or reduce to our starting wiggle wave, like two sounds at the same frequency combining to become even louder. This means that the resulting wave can even go beyond our amplitude value. There's such a level of complexity all taking place through the wiggle expression. And although we often use it for the simplest of uses, it has this amazing heartbeat of complex waves at its core driving all that it does. One thing to remember when applying the wiggle expression to a property is unlike a random number generator, the wiggle expression looks at the values of that property as a reference of where to place its central point. It's adaptive, so the wiggle expression on position will result in two or three values depending on whether it's a 2D or 3D object. A wiggle expression on the rotation property of a layer will result in a value measured in degrees, and so on and so forth. So if you're using it on a position property and require only one wiggle value, you'll need to assign it to a variable and then use the square brackets to select only one value from the resulting position array assigned to that variable. Let's now demonstrate all we've learnt about the wiggle expression by putting it into practice. Here we have a campfire scene made up of a number of different shape layers. If you're one of our Patreon supporters, you can actually download this project file. Now we'll go to our outer flame layer and we want to animate it using our wiggle expression. We're going to go to the scale property and holding alt, click on the stopwatch. That'll give us our expression window. In here we can type wiggle and we'll just start with a basic sort of wiggle expression. One being our frequency, so one wiggle per second and amplitude being 10. So it's going to adjust itself at 10 uh, units of scaling. So 10%, it's going to wiggle up and down. So you can see as we preview that it's wiggling around and you can see it's probably a bit much at 10 being the amplitude. Our fire kind of does this weird and it's scaling a bit too low. So we want to find something that's a good amount. If we go to say 0 0.1, we can scrub along and we're barely seeing any change. So let's go for something like 3. Now if we kind of preview that, you can see it's kind of flickering along. It's doing adjustments to the scale, but it's not too dramatic. The thing that we can note though is our frequency is probably not at the right spot just yet because watching our particles being generated and the scene moving along, it seems a bit flat. So we'll bump out our frequency. Let's try it at say 5 and preview it there. You can see it's got a lot more dynamics to it like so. But as a base value, this is probably still a bit too much. So let's bring it back to 3 as well. If we preview that and scrub along, we can see it's got a bit of movement. It's looking pretty good. But let's actually add in a little bit more complexity because fires being fires, they're not always as smoothly uh, animated. They've got a bit more complexity to their movements. And that's where we can use octave and amp multi as well to get a bit more dynamics in this. So let's add uh, another three for the complexity, but we don't want it too intense or overwhelming. We want it just subtle. So we're going to put 0 0.2 as our amp multi, and that's going to apply this extra complexity from our octaves argument, but it's going to make it a bit smaller. So now when we preview that, we should see there's little extra little flickers kind of surrounding our scaling as well. So if we preview that, you can see there's a little bit of jitter, but on the whole, it's kind of aligning itself to that main sort of wave that it's generating from our frequency and our amplitude. Now, the good thing about Wiggle is it auto generates a random wave every time you apply it to a different property. So what we can do is select that entire expression from our outer flame, and we can apply it to scale for the rest of our dynamic content in this scene. So we'll go to the inner flame and again, clicking on the stopwatch holding alt, we'll get our expression window and we can just paste it in there. And we'll go and we'll do it to a lot of these glowing elements as well that are connected by masks to our logs just around. So our whole glow setup is dynamic. We can get some really cool 
looking results like so. We're also going to apply it to the opacity of our glowing at the back as well. So it just has a little bit of a flicker and we'll test that out. What we'll probably do here is because opacity is a bit more of a subtle feature than scale, we can increase the amplitude to give it a bit more dynamics as well. So we might drop that up to 20 and we can see it's flickering a bit more there. For the fire on the ground, we'll again go and paste the ground scale. And then for this vignette that's kind of surrounding the whole thing, we'll also apply a wiggle expression to the opacity and again, similar to the opacity above, we're going to change the amplitude to something a bit more dynamic. So you can see there it starts flickering a bit more. Our final wiggle we can add is we're going to add a little bit of camera shake to our movement. So going to the position property, we can hold Alt, click on the stopwatch and again type a wiggle expression. But for this one, we want it pretty slow and subtle. So we're going to change our frequency to something really small, like a 0.3. And we're going to change the amplitude to something like a 6. And we're not going to add any complexity via Octave and Amp Multi. We just want this nice and smooth as like a, a small rocking motion as you go through. Now, if we preview that entire thing, let it preview like so, we can see how our scene is vastly changed simply through adding the wiggle expression to a number of our elements. So there's an in-depth look at the wiggle expression, what drives it, how it works, and how you can control it. If you found this video useful, then leave a like, and make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to help out the channel, you can always support it on Patreon. You can get your name mentioned here, and get access to exclusive content. For this video, it's a wiggle visualizer project file, where you can visualize the wiggle expression sound wave that we've spoken of throughout this video. Until next time, my name is Bench, thanks for watching.